Well, thank you so much for stopping by and watching this video. I'm all about making content, whether it be through blogging, Instagram, and YouTube now. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about my training from the prior week, sort of my approach to it, and what I think about maybe some cues that you can implement into your own training. This is really a creative project for me to test the waters. Um, I've always really enjoyed watching YouTube content, and so I figured why not try it out for myself. So with no further ado, let's get into it. Before I go into breaking down the squat form, I gotta say shout out to Zach Gallman. He is my online coach. I worked with him in person when I trained at 614 Barbell in Hilliard, Ohio, which is right outside of Columbus. If you're in the area, you gotta check out 614 Barbell. Great facility, and Zach is an awesome coach. So with these squats, one thing I've been working on for the past about 16 weeks really is not using a belt so I can actually brace the way you're properly intended to brace. And the one thing that I was doing was over relying on the belt and not really expanding my core muscles around the obliques, back, and rectus abdominis, or those six pack muscles, to the best of my ability. My working weight here was 255 for three sets of eight, and it felt super heavy this week. The, uh, the bracing was all right, but I definitely need to make improvements on that. And you can kind of see that throughout these several videos of squatting because you can see the upper chest move as I brace. Ideally, you want to fully expand those core muscles like you're inflating a tire down around your waist or your abdominal area, rather. I... Felt like I was a little far pitched forward as well. You can kind of see that my body makes almost like a 45 degree angle to the ground. And one thing I'm gonna focus on more going forward is once I get that brace, sitting back a little bit more to keep my chest up and use the posterior chain, like the glutes, a little bit more than really relying on my low back and quads. So, this week was a little off on squats, but I dialed it back, which you'll see in the next video. I just used 225 for my last set of eight. Tried to sit back a little bit more and keep my chest up. And in this video, in this part of the video, I will show you how that went. I think it's always important to have a similar setup when you're going to take a squat, bench, or deadlift. So that's that's what I do for my setup. I step into the bar, make sure my back is very tight, get a nice deep brace where I'm extend, expanding my core, locking it down. I'll sit back with my hips first, making sure that my feet are rooted into the ground like I have talons. Ooh, that depth was a little questionable, but hey, we're not in a meet, right? We'll count it, I guess. You can see in this set, I tried to keep my chest a little upright. I was super explosive on that rep, almost to the point where I lost my footing. But it's going to take time, and that's what I want a lot of people to know. Moving on to Bench, this spotter, he was, he was pretty wild. His name's David, too. It was pretty funny because he kept counting the reps out loud, like, one, two, three. And then he was like... Let's go for more. I was like, I'm actually doing five sets of three, but thanks, dude. <laughs> he wanted me to go for like a rep PR or something. But that's just like what you'll run into in a commercial gym setting. It's, it's either like with a spotter will yank the bar off of the rack and you'll lose your like initial setup. Or they'll touch it when you're trying to come up when you don't need them to actually spot you. So using a spotter is always hit or miss, but you got to do what you got to do. And in this next set, I went without the spotter, um, which felt a little awkward. This is typically my bench setup. You'll see me arch like I'm having an exorcism because I want to get that one less range of motion. I want to keep my back tight, which that helps me do. You'll see... You can kind of see the muscles in my lower body flexing because I'm pushing the floor away from me and using my legs in the bench as well, which is something that I could make a whole entirely different video on. Moving on to, this was about two days later, I believe. P 
people are always talking to me in between sets. That's why I'm smiling like a goofball here. But this is Spoto Press, which you pause it about an inch above your chest. I felt much better today, well, that day rather, doing Spoto Press because it felt like my lats were engaged, which was stabilizing the press as a whole. Did I really pause for as long as I should have? Maybe not. I don't know. Something I need to work on. But 230 for five sets of three felt phenomenal with Spoto Press, which I think is a good sign, you know. We're moving up there. And that's all you can really do. And just to preface this next video, my front squats last week, I did 225 for five sets of three, and they felt awful. But this week, I really focused on engaging my core, bracing down to the lower abdominals, obliques, and back, and keeping my thoracic spine, or that mid part of the back, 